What is going on guys? This is Daniel of Hoops Nation and the LotteryMafia.com. Today we'll be taking a look at the great 2010 national championship game between Duke and Butler. Both teams were led by outstanding coaches, Duke's Mike Krzyzewski and Butler's Brad Stevens, and here we take a look at how Butler got his points. Now the thing that stands out to me the most is only four po points off post-ups, and Duke's length was a reason why, thanks to Brian Zubek, 7-foot center. Matt Howard the Butler really struggled early on with Duke's length and finishing shots he usually might make. And not only Zubek, off the bench Duke had Miles and Mason Plumlee to contest the shots as well. Howard actually only played 19 minutes in this game due to foul trouble. Here he picks up his first charging in the Zubek. In the second half, he continues to struggle over the Plumleys, but he did have success in the pick and roll game where Butler scored 18 of its points. Here notice how Zubek has the hedge high. And Butler recognized this and Willie Beasley will set a back screen on Thomas to help and this will get uh, Howard open and he draws a foul. Now another thing that Butler struggled with offensively was the three point shot. Here Ron Onori gets a wide open look off transition but just can't hit it. The one guy who did on a consistent basis was Shelvin Mack. He hit two big ones here that kept them in the game early. I mean these were really tough shots. And I would have liked to see more of Zach Hahn, a bench player who here hits an NBA 3 they could have used him to stretch the floor more. He only played 11 minutes and hit his only 3 point attempt. Now here Gordon Hayward will miss a 3 pointer but that's not the story as Matt Howard picks up a silly loose ball foul and that would sideline him for the rest of the first half. Here senior guard Willie Beasley drives and kicks and Zubak helps one pass away to protect the key and Willie Beasley misses the 3 which will become an incurring trend in this game. Duke consistently helps one pass away on him, and he just keeps on missing. He was 0 for 5 from the three-point line in the game. And on this fast break, he doesn't possess great athleticism either, as instead of dunking it, he gets blocked. And here, Singler helps out on a screen, and to leave Beasley open is okay, as he keeps on missing it. Uh, these were close shots, but any one of them would have really helped out Butler's chances. And again, Zubek protects the key, and Beasley misses. Now I think Brad Stevens made a mistake as Beasley played 38 minutes and Avery Jukes, another senior forward, only played 18. He was able to stretch Zubek out and hit the three, hit two in the first half and had 10 points in the first half. He was looking like the possible X factor but Beasley still got the majority of the minutes and here he can't take Zubek off the dribble, he turns it over which would prove to be costly as Nolan Smith hits a three in transition. Now let's take a look at how Duke scored. They utilized off-ball screens to get Kyle Singler open and guards John Shire and Nolan Smith. And also notice, like Butler, they only had very few post-ups and they only scored 7 points off of that as they're a more guard-oriented team. Duke, for the most part, ran a continuous motion offense, setting screens for their best players. Very little pick and roll, and this would continually get shots. And here on the first possession of the game for them, they got a wide open look for Nolan Smith in the short corner, who drained it. Kyle Singer, though, was the story, as he had 19 points and made many tough jumpers. Here, he just pulls up over Beasley for a nice shot. Beasley was a good 5 inches shorter than Singler at only 6'3", and here he goes under the screen which is a mistake. And on this flare screen, Singler was able to pop out and with a 5 inch advantage over Beasley, if he gets that open there's really nothing they can do. And I really like the action here as they run Nolan Smith off a double staggered screen, then run uh, Singler off a single screen and he hits a tough shot. And in a game this close, every point counts, and here Shelvin Mack foolishly helps one pass away on one of the best three-point shooters in the nation, and John Shire makes him pay. And this is what good teams do if they score on two inbound plays, Hayward shows too much on the screen and Zubek gets a layup, and just great net recognition by Shire and Singler to hook up for an easy layup on the smaller man guarding Singler. Again, it really was Duke's length and overall defense that won them this game. They rotate well, force Butler to move the ball. And they also play pick and rolls pretty well as when Zubek hedges high, they rotate over to cover the roll man, as you can see here. And they're really good at getting in position, contesting shots, and Zubek's length, of course, caused many misses, and here Beasley struggles again. On this possession, Nolan Smith is a little late to rotating on to Dukes, and they allow an offensive rebound, but notice again, Zubek's length really killed Butler in this game. Duke's rotational defense is really solid as here Shire comes over to take the charge. Krzyzewski has really installed this great rotational defense throughout the years and it showed in this game. 
This time Norwich struggles over the tall defenders and a 6-8 wing is just something Butler doesn't see very often as Singler blocks the shot. And on your screen in the second you'll notice how Duke has 7 blocks of Butler 0. That's a huge difference in this game. And again, Duke does a great job forcing tough shots, especially on the baseline, which you'll see a little later. Here Hayward misses it. And Zubek can control Howard in the post, no need to double. Singler allows no middle. Zubek helps out and Mack misses a shot. Singler's hot shooting and Duke's overall good defense allows them to be up by 5 with less than 2 minutes to go. But bad defense and good offense in the last 4 possessions for both teams allows this to get closer. Here Hayward drives and I would have liked to see Lance Thomas rotate over to Howard off Beasley, a good shooter and that allows a wide open layup for Howard. And here Duke do a great job curling Smith off screens but Smith blows the wide open layup. On this end, they get Shelvin Mack a great look in transition, but he just can't hit it. That would have tied the game. But Matt Howard fights, gets the rebound, and you'll see they'll eventually run a pick and roll with Shelvin Mack and Matt Howard. Again, Duke has been known to cur uh, hedge on these high with Zubek, but Singler on the double pick and roll does not rotate over, and Howard gets two layups in a row. Now on the other end, Duke does their typical off-ball screening and Beasley does a terrible job getting over the screens. Singler's wide open but takes an unnecessary fade. He misses and it goes to Butler with a chance to take the lead with less than 35 seconds. Now with under 15 seconds, I like the move to isolate Hayward at the top as he got to the foul line well in the second half. Singler does a great job getting in front and Zubek does a great job forcing an extremely tough shot and he gets fouled. Notice how Zubek's extremely long arms and length forces a tough shot. I'm sure Stevenson didn't mind that shot, but I'm sure Mike Krzyzewski didn't mind that possession either. And as Zubek made the first free throw, here's live commentary of the shot that just wasn't meant to be. Not going to try. It's Hayward pulling it down. Getting around Zubek at midcourt. Launches the shot. Oh, and almost went in. Almost went in. And Duke. It's the king of the dance, 2010. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the video of Duke's great championship win in a thrilling game in 2010. Subscribe for more videos and see you next time.